Climate Liberation Aotearoa, who are here to talk about item 13. Welcome. Kia ora koutou. My name is Michael Lepati, along with uh, Bug Sullivan. I'll be presenting on behalf of Climate Liberation Aotearoa. Uh, it's been incredibly frustrating um, that we've had so much difficulty trying to speak with a number of you prior to this meeting and in general trying to understand how to participate meaningfully in the democratic process on this issue of international shipping and aviation emissions. Surveys a couple of years ago showed that the people of Christchurch are really dissatisfied with the processes for public involvement and the degree of transparency, and I can understand why. We're asking for three things, and if they're not possible today, I'd like to know what is possible. Firstly, we're asking that the Council makes a submission to the Climate Commission in favour of counting international emissions. It's just common sense that we close this loophole that we've already done locally. Our second ask is that you sign our open letter to central government, which encourages them uh, to include these emissions. Your development agency, Christchurch NZ, has already agreed to sign this, and it'll make it easier for you to reach your emission targets. Our third ask is that your staff come up with a plan to reduce international shipping and aviation emissions. You're well aware that you've made only a 1% emissions reduction so far when you're supposed to make a 50% reduction by 2030. You're failing massively because you don't have an adequate plan to get there. Our appreciation to some of you, particularly Melanie Coker, for trying to progress this issue. I was flabbergasted by the response from staff she received yesterday that said that CCHL is acting in line with the Council's 2030 emission target and keeping warming to 1.5 degrees. The same response also included the airport saying that they're trying to influence emission reductions of scope three emissions where possible. This is as if the airport isn't wholly responsible for those scope three emissions, because if they stop airporting for those flights, no emissions. As owners of the airport and the port, you are responsible. If you were serious about your targets, you'd be fitting the number of international flights to the targets rather than fitting the number of flights to business as normal. But that's not happening. So this kind of thinking is why we're blowing past 1.5 degrees. It would be better if you scrapped your 2030 targets entirely rather than proceed with this illusion that you're doing everything possible. Because that illusion of trust and transparency, that's a betrayal. If you're abdicating responsibility by not doing your best, you need to be open and transparent with the public about this. Last night, I felt so frustrated that I seriously considered whether I should superglue myself to something in these chambers at the end of the speech to expose the absurdity of the situation. Now, I'm not doing that because I want to hear back from you how you can untie your hands and actually take the actions that will meet your targets. So. I'm 16 and I'm not here because I want to get out of English class or I think talking to the council is exciting. I'm here because I'm scared. Scared of a future where we are forced to face the full brunt of climate change, where extreme weather events and land made unfit for food production destroy communities and ultimately exacerbate inequality to its worst and bring about immense human suffering. Because on our current track, this is my future. This year recorded the largest increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere ever. According to The Guardian, 77% of the planet's climate experts expect global warming to reach at least 2.5 degrees. Only 6% expect the world to meet its ideal goal of 1.5. In 2021, the UN Climate Secretary of Climate Change compared our trajectory to walking into a minefield blindfolded. All this is, these facts don't just threaten my future, they haunt my present. I'm constantly faced with the stress of seeing statistic after statistic proving how desperate our situation is. The hopelessness that comes with looking around at a society so ignorant and slow to change. I don't get to think about what I want to do in adulthood, about building a life for myself without the dread that I won't have a stable world to do these in. All this is to say that creating local and central reduction plans for international transport emissions should be a no-brainer. These emissions, particularly cruise ships, are extreme luxury emissions. As you've, as you've probably heard before, the richest 1% of people emit more carbon than the poorest 66%. These emissions, while not quite to that level, are still used by the wealthiest portions of people on Earth. 
Though its use needs to be dramatically reduced, yes, there are cases where we need international air travel. But there is absolutely no situation in which it is imperative for someone to get on a cruise ship. And unnecessary emissions like these should be things we jump to cut for the sake of both equality and simplicity. Re regulating international emissions is nothing special. It's just another obviously necessary step of our transition. So please, if you value your future, my future, and those of countless others, please vote today to make a plan to reduce these emissions. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, I, if we've got some questions, that's fine. We, we are way over time because I've gone over on the others, but it's only fair that we give everyone time for questions if they've got some. Uh, Councillor Coker, please. This might be hard for you to answer, but um, through the LTP, we've, we've seen a lot of people present um, concerned about climate change. We've also seen a lot of people present believing that it's it's false and that it's an agenda set by some other person. You know, can you tell me why you think some people are sort of finding it difficult to believe, um, you know, that climate change is happening and will affect us in the future? I can't answer all of that, but I think part of the problem is that some of these kind of conspiracy-minded people are actually picking up on something real. They're picking up on an authenticity and a dishonesty in the way leadership is actually conveying the situation they're in. I don't think at all they're reaching the right conclusions, but I think there is a breakdown of trust, which is because there is a timidity on the part of leadership to actually um, talk about this in a real, authentic way. Okay. Councillor Scandrick? Yeah, thank you. It's, um you, know, you, you mentioned about closing the airport, etc. Because or, or, or the, it's the largest or second largest um, bring of um, carbon monoxide, as in flight, as in airplanes. Was that right? Uh, emissions. Uh, sorry, emissions. Sorry, I didn't talk uh, about closing the airport. Could you reframe your question? Well, I'm just trying to understand. It's, many of the um, high polluting businesses, whatever they are, mm. and I'm not a fan of cruise ships anyway, but mm. they. they if they are, it's about having a plan to reduce pollution yeah. without affecting the workers that will be most affected if it was just slam dunked. I mean, it's got to be a progression, and we've got to do that with respect to all. And I'm just, sure. I'm just wondering, it, it's a lot of pressure on to change quickly, but I'm just in a kind of a, 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 a odd position of wanting to protect the, the, the lowest paid workers on the way through. Because mm -hmm. when we mentioned, when I, Rod, Rod Carr was here, and he was saying, oh, you know, we need to get cars off the road, we should be getting into electrics. But many families can't afford a new or second-hand electric car. The old diesel 4x4 is the one that they use just to get the family around. So I'm just wondering, there has to be a bit of respect for all as we transition. So it may take a bit longer which is a bad thing, but maybe we should concentrate on all polluting rather than just one thing. Look, I, I completely agree about the need for the transition to be just. Yep. And that is part of the reason we are focusing on the luxury emissions, yep. which in Cruise terms ships, of justice, yep. those yep. kind of need to be tackled first. I agree that they all need to be tackled. And w whatever plan is come up, with to de deal with this should take into account the needs of the workers and, and to make that transition work for people. Yeah. So I'm completely in agreement, but we need to move fast as well as move with a sense of justice. Both need to happen. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And I think lastly, Councillor Barber, please. Thank you. Look, thanks for your presentation. It takes a lot of courage to come up and, and speak in public like this. Um, I just would like you to give us your thoughts on the on the context of New Zealand in the world stage, um, our emissions are 0 0.09 of the world emissions. What do you think is the value in us uh, acting? Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can see. Um, I think just the point is that even if we don't pollute as much as like super polluters like the US, in order for us to have a livable future, we all need to change. and. In regards to wider climate change response, this isn't just about reducing our emissions. We can build a more sustainable, like, equality-focused society in the process. And it's kind of 
it has more benefits than purely emissions and it's thing like we do have to change everyone has to change we can't just put it off and say oh the us will deal with it because even if they do we are still emitting and that eventually has to stop yeah. i'd you. like to just add okay. briefly um these same points have been made earlier this year in these council chambers mm -hmm. that per person in Aotearoa we emit well above the average globally per person of greenhouse gas emissions so that's an ethical obligation on us to move faster and the point has already been made to this council earlier this year that if you add up all of the small emitting nations like us mm. we actually make a massive proportion of global emissions and just a final thought um just you know given that our, our contribution is is pretty small how, how can we actually impact the big polluters of the world, the United States, China, India, and uh, other countries. How do you think we can affect that? Well, other nations are already sending powerful signals, like the EU and the UK are both making the same move to include international emissions. So every time another nation joins that movement and says, okay, we're doing that too, and this change will need to start locally, then that sa sends a signal to other nations hey, we should get on board. There are okay. three countries now, four countries now, etc. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your submission. Thank you.